we're excited tonight. <clears throat> I have with me uh, Coach Kathy Gordon. She's a teacher at the elementary school. She's um, been coach now. Is this your third year, Kathy? And uh, Coach Misty as well. She's in her third year with us as well. She's a teacher at the elementary school as well. So I'm um, excited to have them here. And I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, this, this information is going to be on our website as well. And so um, it will be available for you to review and to tell your friends about and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen. Um, so earlier today, we talked about um, our summer expectations with our returning runners. We have um, about 40 returning runners from last year. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to go over some of the same stuff with you. But some of the same, I'm going to do some new stuff as well. And as you have questions, feel free to chat those questions to me. And um, I'll try to make sure that I answer all of them by the end of the end of the night. Um, our mission is, is very important. It's not something we've just got written down. It's something we talk about a lot. And that is that WLXC, which if, if you're not aware of yet, stands for West Lauderdale Cross Country, is committed to pursuing excellence through teamwork and individual effort while building character and instilling pride in its student athletes. And excellence is something we talk about from the minute we get to practice to when we leave practice to when we come to the meet till we leave the meet. Everything we do, we want to um, pursue excellence in that. And our other, our motto is the only thing that is better than running is running with friends. And that's where you can help me tonight as you think about some of the seventh graders that are not signed up yet, um, encourage them to sign up. I'm sure we'll, we usually gain um, eight or 10 kids across the summer. So um, all of this information will be there. Their parents can go out there, check it out, see if it's cross, cross country is for them. Um, so we have a website and let me go ahead and bring in our website to show you. It is WLXCteam.com. And at that website, you can see a lot of information about our team. A lot of the information we're going to go over tonight, the power, including the PowerPoint, um, general information sheet that we're gonna go over, the forms that you will need um, for this season. Uh, all of that stuff is going to be up there. Plus, the WLXC sign up um, is there so you can direct someone else who hasn't signed up yet to go out there and sign up. With you. We also, um, guess, um, someone might not be muted. They can mute themselves. There you go. We also have information about Strava. I'm going to talk more about Strava. And if you um, get a chance to, um, <clears throat> you can walk, watch our Strava casts. We've done nine of them during the pandemic, and it's really been a way for our team to stick together and work towards common exercise goals and have a little bit of uh, fun while we're doing it. So if you get a chance, go out there and look at that. This group of seventh graders is really um, fortunate because every year we talk to our seniors that are leaving and we ask them about their cross country memories and invariably what they talk about is the memories of the older kids on their team and especially the seniors on their team when they were just seventh and eighth graders. And we have the strongest group of seniors um, on the team ever. We've got the largest group and they are just a solid uh, group of kids. There's actually one or two more that I need to add on here, but they provide a lot of leadership and we are very much about building a community on the team and we make sure that every team member learns every other team member's um, name and, and we encourage each other. And so that's a really special part about this team. And, and I just, um, each, each runner that's on there is just a special person that's um, an amazing leader and um, somebody really somebody. And we're really excited, uh, Coach Kathy's son, Brett, um, he recently recorded uh, Sweet Home Okatibi, so you'll have to go out there. That's going to become our anthem, I'm sure, for years to come, but we've been doing some parodies of songs, and, and he did that. So that's our website, just something for you to go look at um, and explore a little bit more later on. We'll be adding content to that. That's WLXCteam.com. All right. We 
go with it? Um, so let me see if I can do participants. I'm just gonna, okay. All right, so making the team. Um, everybody's always concerned about, you know, how do you make the team? There will be a time trial on July 27th. That is our first night of practice. Um, and at that time trial, trial on July 27th, middle school runners, which all of you are middle school runners, will be expected to run two miles in under 25 minutes. Um, almost everybody is capable of doing that with a little bit of work. There's some of you that could go out there right now and probably do that. So it's not a high bar. Um, but we will be working across the summer at achieving that goal. We will make an exception. If there is someone, we've had people come in that just, that they aren't there yet. And if you put in the summer work, the expectations that we're asking of all of our runners across the summer, if you put in the summer work, we will make an exception if you don't meet the goal that night. And for runners that don't meet the goal that night, that met their summer expectations, They'll be placed on a practice squad, practice with a team, and given additional time to reach that goal. Cross country is about helping each individual start where they're at and achieve their potential. That's the great thing. There's no bench in cross country. Everybody runs every week. Everybody gets a chance to improve. And it's those stories of, of people who show that remarkable improvement, even though they might not end up being all state or, or something like that. Those are the stories that, that, uh, we, the coaches, thrive off of and the rest of the team celebrates with. So summer training expectations, just to give you a little idea. So our varsity runners, the expectation for them is four to six runs a week, a minimum of three hours running per week. So that's 45 minutes, four times a week is, is three hours. That's what we're expecting out of the kids that are going to run varsity for us and compete at the district and state meets this year. Our JV runners, <clears throat> the expectation is across the summer is three runs per week, an hour and a half total. That's 30 minutes of running. And for new runners, um, in June, we're just asking a minimum of three runs per week, um, a minimum of one hour running per week. That's 20 minutes uh, three times a week. And then in July, moving up to what our JV runners are doing, a minimum. Now, that's the minimum. If you want to be really good, there's they we've had um, – Seventh and eighth graders even move themselves up to varsity for um, for the district meet and even sometimes uh, varsity at the at the overall. So if you want to be more than that, certainly these are just minimums. This is important, especially in the times of uh, the pandemic and COVID nineteen. Summer training can be done at the time of day and the location of each runner's choice. Group runs that I'm going to talk about in a second, group runs are totally, totally optional. All right, and I just really, I'm going to take a little break from our summer running uh, expectations. And uh, let, I'm going to, I'm trying to think, I was going to do general information. I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep working through that. I'll keep working. I'll edit that little part out there during my indecision there. Um, so group runs are totally optional. Summer training is all about building your running economy. And that's some, a new term that I'm, I'm throwing around this year. But running economy is your body. What that means is your body, heart, lungs, and muscles. That's the three things that make you run. Becoming more efficient at running long distances. And there's only one way to build running economy, and that's by doing long runs. 30 minutes or more, more often, three plus times a week. That's the only way. You know, you might go to baseball, you might go to basketball, and there's somebody who's just called a natural. They're great. There's never been a great runner that hasn't put in the time, a great long distance runner that hasn't put in the time and built their running economy. This is as true as I can tell, tell you, tell it to be. The more you run, the better your running economy becomes. The enemy of long runs, which is what you need to build running economy, is starting out too fast. And that's a really difficult thing that you're going to be faced with. As you learn to run, you're going to tend to start out too fast because you, you don't know the pace that you're running at. And that's okay. That's what we're 
there for as coaches, and there's some really neat apps now that help with that. The keys to running longer is learning your pace. That's number one, learning the right pace to start out with, not starting out at a sprint and then walking after the first 200 yards. And the second thing to extend runs is by using the run-walk method. In other words, if you can't go out and run 20 minutes, which I wouldn't, if you haven't been doing anything so far, I wouldn't expect you to be able to run 20 minutes straight. You can extend your runs by walking for little bits of time and then uh, continuing to run. So let me show you um, what, that, what that looks like. Um, I'm gonna show you on, on uh, one of my runs recently. Okay, so here's my run. Now this is the Strava app and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but it really helps you learn that pace. But if you look at this, this is a run that I did out at Okatibi Dam. You can kind of see the, 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 the dam there. And you can see that when I start out running, what I do is I start out at my pace right around an 8.30 to eight to nine minute pace. And then after about a quarter mile, I walk for about 15 seconds. And so you can see my pace right there, it goes down to about 11, 12 minute, minutes per mile, right? That's, that's a slower pace. And then you can see I go back to running again right? And I run for the, about the next mile. But then after the next mile, mile and a quarter, you see my pace go down again to about 11 minutes. I start walking for again about 15, 20 seconds. And then you see as I go farther and I run, I walk at two and a half miles and at three miles and three and a half miles and four and four and a half and then I run five. So if I went out and just tried to run straight through I wouldn't be able to do it. Overall, my pace, about a nine minute mile, is pretty decent. That's where I need to be for my ability level at this time in my life when I'm 53. So that's an example of how, if I only, if I went out there and just ran straight, didn't take those little 15 to 30 second walk breaks, I would only be able to go two and a half miles. I would only be able to stay out there about 20 minutes. I wouldn't build my running economy like I would. So the key is, is when you walk, you walk at certain intervals and you only walk for a little bit and you walk fast so that you don't let your heart rate go down. If you look at my heart rate, which again, there's some really neat things that you can measure nowadays with watches and whatnot. You see my heart rate goes up and I let it go down to 142 and then it will go as high as about 170 and then it'll come back down to 148. But I never let my heart rate go down below about 140 beats per, per minute. As a younger person, your heart rate is even higher. You shouldn't let it go down between below probably 160. As a matter of fact, we do some workouts where you run up a hill, run down the hill, you take your heart rate and you don't start the next one until your heart rate is below 40 beats per 15 seconds or 160 beats per minute. So. Again, it's all about keeping your heart rate elevated for an extended period of time. The more you do it, the better your running economy becomes and the better you become at, at a, as a long distance runner. Um, so that's just a little bit about run walk. It's a little bit about run walk. A lot more in depth than you probably need to go at this point in your, your running career, but uh, we'll be talking about that um, when you come to practice. Just an idea there, you can sort of gear what your 5K time is and you can look at what your running pace should be. So I run, most of my runs are at around nine minutes. Um, that's because my 5K time is probably around 23 minutes right now, maybe a little bit lower. So over here I can see that my running should be between 9, 10, and 10, 17. So we're gonna help you identify um, what your running pace should be. But when we talk about pace, we're going to talk in terms of miles per minute. And it's really important that you, that you measure that. Um, <clears throat> up here you see on the top, here you see another one of our runners. And you see that when she was running, she was running around 1130 pace, which is fine. And then you see she walked sometimes. Um, when she walked, though, sometimes she let it get a little bit too slow. Um, so, again, just another example of it. Group runs are optional. 
but logging your runs is not optional. That is mandatory for excellence. It's mandatory that we keep track of our runs and we compare how we're improving over time or we never get better. So we don't want to get into a situation where people just go out there and just run aimlessly and, and don't improve because that's frustrating. It's frustrating to athletes. It's frustrating to coaches too when they don't see any improvement over time. And so logging your runs is something that we strongly encourage. There is an application that I'm going to talk about, Strava, that records your runs. And that's what uh, most of our team is recording their runs on now. They're logging their runs, but you can actually take a phone with you. It doesn't have to be your phone. A parent can borrow out their phone. You can hit a button, record, and it's very similar to Map My Run or Run Keeper or Nike app or any of those apps. Strava does is the best for coaches being able to look in on it. And what this enables, especially during this time when we're going to be doing some, some remote coaching to an extent. So we're not going to be able to spend as much time at practice standing around talking to runners and giving them feedback. But this app gives us the opportunity of looking at every run, just like I was looking at my run. It gives me the opportunity of looking at every run that you do and give you feedback along with Coach Misty and Coach um, Kathy doing the same. We go through and we look at those runs and we can give you some pointers. Hey, maybe you need to start off a little slower, you know, or you did a good job on, on spacing out your walks, that kind of thing. So it gives us a chance to monitor your training. It gives us a chance to give you feedback and it gives you a chance to see progress over time. And that's really fulfilling as you see yourself improving. So that's the Strava app. Strava directions are located out on our um, website. You can go out, you can join the Strava site. You can set, so if you're below 13, if you're a 12 year old, then the parent would have to create the account. You can put in an alias name and tell us what that alias name is. Um, you can set your privacy settings to just allow followers to see them and then you can determine who the followers are. But that will really help us to help you um, grow as a runner. Runners are expected to post uh, runs each week at a minimum. Their first act, remember we talked about a minimum of three runs per week. I want you to post or log your first run by Tuesday, so Monday is the start of the week, a second run by Thursday, and a third run by Sunday. So we don't get into the, um, fall into the trap of, oh, I've still got, it's Friday, but I've still got Friday, Saturday, Sunday to post runs, and, and then we don't get it done. So we want you to be doing runs and spacing them out through the week. Now, Strava is not a requirement. If you are unable to, if you don't have access to a phone, um, you don't have data, or you just don't, you choose not to, that's fine. But contact me, my phone number's uh, out there in several other locations. Contact, have a parent contact with me text, and let's work out a different form of logging runs, because we really do want to work individually with each child. Again, group runs that we're going to talk about right now are totally, totally optional, okay? So it's totally up to you, safety-wise, where um, uh, how you feel, how safe you feel about um, your child and the COVID-19 and all that stuff, totally up to you. But we are going to make it available for those that need a supervised place to run at or just wanna come run with the team. They are held at the Okatibi Dam Spillway. So you drive into the park, you drive past the upper part of the bank. I always get this confused. Is that the Western Dam, Eastern, <laughs> Eastern? So um, you drive past that. You go down to where the, the spillway is. The water's coming out of the dam. We park in that parking lot. Um, new runners, we're going to do one tomorrow night at 630 just for new runners, and there'll be a few seniors there, and we'll go over some um we'll go over some stretching out some drills talk about that and we'll do a little run we'll probably show you a run walk to talk about that and um, then we'll show you some stretching out so we'll kind of just have it there 
to show you um, the ropes. That will be at 6.30. Um, it would be great if you had your Strava app loaded and you've got an account by then so we can record a run so then we can look at it together. That would be great if you had that in place. Group runs thereafter, starting this Thursday night, will be on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays in June and July, with the exception of July 4th week. I think July 4th is on a Saturday, so it's the week leading up to that. All right, there is on the website, there is um, a COVID-19 and that COVID-19 waiver um, simply says that you understand as a parent, um, and it's right here under so, Summer Info, COVID-19 waiver, it just says you understand that we're going to do everything we can to keep um, the, the environment safe, COVID-free, um, but again, it's, it's something that we, um, nobody can guarantee anything. So that's a signed waiver that um, your child will need to bring to the first evening of practice. If you don't have, have access to a printer, we will have some printed copies that night. You can get one from a coach and just sign it that night. So that's the COVID waiver. Um, new runners also, new runners also need to bring a, um, physical waiver. So this year, um, if your child does not have a physical, now if they've gotten a physical recently from a doctor, you can just bring that in and we'll put that on file. But if not, um, there is a participation waiver for new runners um, that says, I understand this does not take the place of a physical, and I, I'm guessing that we'll do physicals once, um, once we're able to do that. So Two things you'll need to bring the first night you come tomorrow night, if you choose to come tomorrow night, um, is a COVID waiver and a physical waiver. And both of those, again, can be found at the website to print out, or we will have printed copies available as well. All right. Um, tomorrow night, we will show you the um, stretching routines and the warm-ups and the cool downs all of that stuff following that we'll expect all of the runners to come they'll do their warm-ups ahead of time so that when they come to practice they're going to be they're going to be doing activities the whole time so they won't have to wear a mask because they'll be exercising and, and that's state policy is no masks while you're in the process of exercising all right um, starting on Thursdays Varsity runners will come at 6.30, and our JV and new runners will come at 6.45. So we'll have a little bit of a staggered start so that we don't have big lineups and, and that kind of thing. Upon arrival, just to give you a little idea of how it's going to go tomorrow night, upon arrival, each runner will go to the spillway gate. There's the gates right now. They're closed, um, and there will be a coach there with a thermometer. They will um, – take your temperature, record that, and then you'll go straight into running from there. Tomorrow night, we'll go into drills and that kind of thing, but in the future group runs, you'll go straight into running. Hand sanitizer will be available. COVID-19 symptoms will be um, posted. The COVID-19 symptoms are also available on our website. Read over them. If you have any of those symptoms, um, just stay home. Stay home and come another day. Uh, just be cognizant of maintaining proper social distancing with other runners. If they're in line for the temperature check, just make sure you stay six feet apart. Um, following the temperature check on regular group runs, runners will begin running. They can run together with other people, but they just need to be mindful of staying six feet apart from one another. Once a runner has concluded their run, they'll have an area to cool down on, walk a little bit, uh, and then stretch out individually. And then we want each person's ride to be there um, at about 7.15, a little bit before, so that they're ready to pick up their runners um, and, and be done. Tomorrow night, you can be there at about 7 o'clock. I don't think we'll take any more than 45 minutes probably um, for the totality of it tomorrow night. 
little general information. Um, we talked about the physical waiver, the COVID waiver. Make sure you have that. If someone's trying out for volleyball, um, you're not going to be able to run both cross country and play volleyball. Uh, but the volleyball tryouts are June 17th and 18th. If you're thinking about, you'd like to thinking about both, um, I would encourage you to start cross country, start getting in shape. If you make the volleyball team, great. If not, we'll still be here. And, and uh, this summertime is really a chance for you to give cross country a try and see if you like it. Um, so uh, there's, I think there, I heard 128 um, girls trying out for volleyball for maybe 25 or 30 positions total. So um, I, I think we'll get some more cross country runners following tryouts. All right, I just want to, one more thing before we uh, leave you go tonight. I'm going to go out to our website, and on our website, we have um, just general information about cross country. So you can go back and read this um, once we're done tonight, but I just want to go over a few things uh, with it. Cross country explains. Some people say, hey, are you going to do track this fall? And that's always, anybody that knows cross country, that's just like, flies all over you because it's nothing like track whatsoever. Um, cross country is a team sport and you, you will find that it is very much team oriented. Um, varsity and JV high schoolers race 3.1 miles. Middle school races are almost always two miles long. Uh, the top five runners from each team score for the meet and low score wins. So a perfect score would be a team that gets first, second, third, fourth, and fifth place or 15 points. That's low score. Um, but as I said, everybody runs every week. So you have an opportunity to, to work at just improving your own time. Um, the time trial I already talked about, practice squad I already talked about, practice schedule. It is just um, an integral part, a necessary part um, for what we do. And excellence can't be achieved without practice. And a team can't achieve excellence without practicing together. Um, we'll send out a practice schedule to you Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. We practice at Okatibi Dam. We meet at the spillway um, and generally practice lasts for an hour and a quarter, hour and a half. Um, we start out the year practicing at 6.30. By the beginning of September, I think we're moving to six o'clock and maybe even in beginning of October, we might even have to move to 5.30. So as the sun, as we get less daylight, we move it down. Wednesdays, we practice at um, the high school in the gym, and we generally do core exercises. Uh, we do stations. We run a couple laps. We do a station, push-ups, sit-ups, whatever, um, and then we run more laps. And So it's kind of a cardio and core workout at the same time. Um, you know, it always comes up, Hey, I'm in soccer. I do this. I do that. It's really difficult to excel, um, without being able to come to all of the cross country practice. Now we do from time to time work with somebody. If there's a day of the week that they have to, um, miss, we can work with them, but that those Monday, Tuesday, Thursday practices are really, really important. Really, really important. So again, we work with individuals on an, on an individual basis, but it's really hard to replicate on your own uh, the types of workouts we do. And then we also do some Saturday workouts um, when we don't have meets. Um, practice details, a watch. It doesn't need to be a fancy watch. Just well, I've got some actually sitting in my trunk for sale, $10 a piece, but uh, just a watch to keep time with, it's helpful. Hydrate every day. You can't drink, well, you can drink too much water, but I, I haven't seen anybody that has yet. Make sure that you are drinking throughout the day before you come to practice, because by the time you come to practice, if you try to catch up then, you won't be able to. Um, do not skip meals. We have practices in the evening times, and, um, and uh, so you need to get onto a cycle where you're still getting your meals. And be mentally prepared to run when you come. Injuries versus pain, there's some good information there, but essentially most injuries you're going to treat with rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Um, the meet schedule, the last meet of the year for middle school 
and JV runners is generally at the beginning of October. So it's not a long season. Um, then the district meet is towards the end of October and the state meet is at the beginning of November. Occasionally we have some runners who make the district team as seventh grade and eighth grade. Um, communication. All right. This is the only thing that you got to get. Um, Right here, the Remind app. We communicate everything through a Remind app. This is for athletes and their parents. You join our 2020 group. We just added this new group today by texting 81010, texting at WLXC 2020, at WLXC 2020. You text that to 81010. Because after this, tonight I sent a text out to, to people, but after this, it's all through that app. So um, if, you, if, if you want to know what's going on, that's what we communicate through. So that's the Remind app, at WLXC 2020. Text that to 81010. Um, Dragonfly, uh, Kathy, do you think that's something that we should – that they can go ahead and start doing now? Uh, I haven't heard anyone mention Dragonfly. All right. So right well, now. Dragonfly is something that we might be talking to you about later on in the summer. I, I think I'm pretty sure they're going to continue doing it. It's just, it's a place where you take a sportsmanship thing. and that, But you would need to add them first though, right, Kathy? Yes, yes. So, and right now, if you, get right. A, if, they, if you do get a physical, get that to me. Yeah. But the waiver will work until then. Right. So we'll talk about that more. Um, we encourage each athlete to um, get at least one business sponsorship, and those can be sold for 125, 250, 500, or a thousand. Um, athletes who are unable to sell a sponsorship, um, we ask that they contribute fifty dollars towards teams' expenses, which include race day shirts, entry fees, course upkeep, transportation costs, team banquet, and much, much more. Um, all of that will be taken care of first night of practice. So don't worry about that now. You can start to, uh, there, at the end of this form, there is a sponsorship form that you can have filled out and you can turn that into uh, Coach Kathy. But we'll talk about that more on the first night of practice or leading up to that. Um, volunteer opportunities there's lots of those uniforms we'll distribute those in August um, team social media we have Instagram and uh, Twitter and Facebook um, so that tells you how to join all of that we'll be doing team t-shirts talks a little bit about shoes I wouldn't go out and buy real expensive shoes right now the, the running that they're going to be doing is not going to be real heavy duty but you know, as you start to get more serious about the sport, you're probably going to want to get real running shoes, which really very few stores around Meridian sell what would be considered real running shoes. There's some information there. Usually best to order them online or go to a place like Fleet Feet over in Jackson. School day insurance is um, available if they want it, and um, there is an end-of-the-year banquet. All right. Um, Coach Kathy and Coach Misty, what did I miss? Anything that you can think of? Nope, I can't think of anything. Oh, come on. All right. <laughs> you covered it all. I'm sure there's something I missed. All right, are there any questions from anybody? Um, just a brief review. We're going to have a new runner's orientation tomorrow night. Totally optional, as are all the group runs. Um, but what we'll be doing tomorrow night, come dressed to run, make sure you're hydrated ahead of time. We're not going to try to, you know, really, you know, really overwork anybody tomorrow night. We're going to try to show you how to warm up, how to stretch, how to cool down, and a little bit about run walking and pacing and that kind of thing. Um, again, Strava, parents, uh, you know, that, that tool is, is like I can be a personal coach with, uh, every single runner, which we had last year, we have 65. This year, I will probably end up with a similar number. But I can be a personal coach. Our, our other two coaches can be a personal coach to them. 
by reviewing that uh, every night. So that's really valuable, amazing tool, amazing tool. So consider that. All right. And so tomorrow night, be 630. Um, be there to pick them up. Probably seven. Hopefully we'll be done by about 715 or sooner. It's going to be a lightweight. And then Thursday night, we'll start with our group runs. Um, I think that'll be everything. And my number is is uh, in, again, it's in this information here. Uh, it's several other places. Feel free to text me with any kind of questions you have, or if you know Coach Misty and Coach Kathy, you can text them, and they usually respond quicker than I do. <laughs> I guess I didn't tell you, but I, I'm a, I own a web applications business. I'm a former school teacher and uh, assistant principal and principal uh, in the Meridian system and also up in Tupelo. And now I own a web applications business that works with around the state. So that's a little bit of my background. So we're excited. Uh, I can't say enough about the team that we have. They are a great group of individuals and our seniors are um, great as well. So. All right, if we, I see one chat, let's see. Can Strava, yes, uh, can Strava work on an Apple Watch? Actually, I have an Apple Watch and it's awesome because with the Apple Watch, it keeps your heart rate and your um, uh, pace at the same time and it automatically Bluetooths up to your phone seamlessly. Misty, can you do a pre and post workout video? <laughs> I'm sure she can. Actually, that is something that we might be trying. We'll have to see. But uh, some of our kids especially really like the core workouts that we do. And so we might try to get Coach uh, Misty to do a Zoom core workout for us. And I, I guarantee you, she's been at it two years with our team. We haven't had a runner yet that could keep up with her workouts, including her son. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right well we're excited about it i hope i hope you all are excited about it uh, summertime is a great chance to give um give your uh give you a chance to experience cross country and see if you like it and hopefully you all remembered our motto the only thing better than running is running with friends and so tell your friends about it tell them to go out to the website sign up. I'll keep my eye on the names that are on there and um, we can get them started as well. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank y'all. Look forward to seeing you.